Welcome to PTG TV. This is your host, Antonio Hicks. Yeah, I know I've been a little um, a slacking for a week or so, but man, life has just been lifing on me and just kind of had me <laughs> in a place to where I was streaming. I just wasn't making like content, content to feed into the YouTube algorithm, which I care about to a degree because I mean, I finally got my subscribers over a thousand, which I'm up to, up to 7,000 now, which is still fluctuating between 7,300. So thank y'all. That's helped me get to this point. Thank y'all for tuning in. No, where, no matter where you are in the world, I appreciate y'all for following me in this channel because even though you may have saw some of my videos, you didn't have to hit that subscribe button. But if you're watching this now, I welcome you to subscribe to this channel. It is PTG TV's Politics, Technology, and Gaming where we talk about all things news today. And we talk about it just unbiased and from a personal opinion of my own. And it's, and it's based upon facts because I will I ran for office as a congressional candidate here in the state of Georgia. And I'm actively involved in the political system here at times. I have pulled away for a little bit because of all the stress that comes by being behind one particular party, which I kind of pulled away from the party for a little bit. And I worked in technology for 20 something years. And I'm a big gamer, but gaming doesn't always equate to like the actual like video game, video games. It can it's just the game of life and how to survive and navigate through the game of life as it integrates with with politics and it integrates with technology, how technology plays a part of life itself. So that's the whole purpose and premise behind PTG TV. I know it's a whole it's a, just the intro feel. Intro is going a little bit too long. It's going, yeah, it is going too long. But anyway, thank y'all for tuning in this to this uh week's episode. There's gonna be more episodes coming up behind this one. I want to talk on the subject, subject today because one of the things that just came up is about uh, Google Podcasts going away. So this is like a podcast slash YouTube video, but I mean, that's important. So the, the topic is about why tech fails and why do you have uh, so many applications or technology things like hard technology or soft technology that comes out and it ultimately ends up going to the scrapyard because Google Podcasts was something actually, it was pretty good. I mean, it was kind of clunky. At first, because it was kind of hard to discover certain things. And even The Verge made a good point talking about it in one of their recent articles. I think it was published yesterday. And it was saying that if... if Because YouTube made a point to where that a lot of people was watching podcasts on YouTube more so than actual Google Podcasts. But I'm like, but you weren't promoting it the way that you promoted YouTube. because, And I get YouTube is one of your their big money makers. But still, you weren't promoting one of your own personal applications that's in your company on the big platform because you could have like Verge made a point to, to go back where they said to where they could at least say if shorts was important on YouTube, then they could have had a link where you could have linked your shorts, your actual podcast on Google Podcasts. So if people actually like the shorts, they could actually go listen to the full episode on Google Podcasts. They didn't do that. It's got to be linked to a video on the actual YouTube channel. And so that's why I'm like, you know, you you put all this money in people and talent, which is crazy too, because you got jobs tied to these platforms and they don't always, and y'all know how tech companies go, if you or corporate jobs go. If you if you don't know, this is generally how it goes when it comes to surpluses or layoff. They don't shift the talent around to other departments to have them be able to just switch a job to something else. They gotta apply, like everybody else got to apply, go through the whole interview process, as opposed to I'm like, if you got developers over here. I mean, even if you're de developing in a different language, generally developers know at least two to three different languages, if not four, if not more than that. I'm like, you could have just shifted them from one department to another department where you needed resources at and moved them over. I mean, I myself have just gone through that recently in my current job to where my contract wasn't, um, they didn't fulfill my contract going forward after March. But they moved me to a different team doing something similar to what I was doing. Well, asked me if I wanted to go, but then they moved me to a different team. I mean, I had the interview for nothing. It was just, okay, do you want to move over here to do something similar to what you were doing over here? And I was like, yeah, you know, why not? That was a good example of shifting them from one place to another. Now, did the company do that? No. It was somebody that vouched for me that did that. The company should automatically do something like they give you an option to be able to want to actually move to a different department. But to get back on, you know, why tech fails, they had a study that came out by a big company that found that 75% of all IC projects failed due to errors in like the setup phase of it. And I think that's the, even in, I think it goes past the setup phase too, but they say the most common reasons for the fail of those projects are unclear or inadequate uh, requirements, incorrect timing and budget planning and in inadequate communication between project, project requirements. And I mean, we've seen a lot of cases with it too, like one guy, one company, that's why we have issues with venture capitalists. Venture capitalists funded this one company. It was for a guy that made, he, he came up with this, this new way of juicing. Supposedly this new way of juicing. 
And they gave this man, it was at least 50 to 80 million, if not a hundred something million dollars. But anyway, it was in the millions of dollars investing in this guy's company. And this guy, his project, it wasn't a new way of juicing. This man had juice in a bag, and it ended up being that the juice got, I mean, the venture capitalists never even got to see the product. They just went by his his concept and his pitch to them. But it being like, it was, the juice was in the bag, and it just squeezed the juice out of the bag. And everybody was like, we gave you money to, I mean, anybody can put juice in the bag and squeeze it out. You, you said there was, you had a new way of juicing that cut down on like the waste store having to clean up or something. So I'm like, they'll invest in stuff like that. And that wasn't even a great idea, but you do have some certain people out there or companies. I mean, this is just giving something totally different, but they won't invest in other products or services that actually legitimately have a great product. But I mean, you have other things that, like the Sony Betamax. This is for my old heads out there. So if y'all remember the Sony Betamax, it was a VCR. And ultimately, VCRs lost that war from to VHS. If y'all remember VHS, because y'all remember the old Blockbuster days and the Blockbuster videos and how we went from VCR. I mean, even when it was LaserDisc. So you had LaserDisc. Before the whole VCR, <laughs> yeah, VCRs. Oh, or the VHS. And laser to me, I thought Laserdisc was cool, but Laserdisc, dude. If y'all, if you see, y'all need to go look up how Laserdisc, how big Laserdisc was. There were like these huge, almost like album cover type discs that you had to slide into a player to play from. It was cool tech at the time. But now, is that feasible up until today's standards? Hell no, nah. because it requires way too much space. And then you had the Apple Newton, which was like a personal digital system, so your PDA. So it had like handwriting recognition. Um, clunk, it had like big clunky software on there, but it was similar to what the Palm Pilot was. If y'all remember the Palm Pilot, it was like one of the first. Uh, you, I guess you could say it was the earlier days of tablets to where you could actually write on it. It could do like your calendars and stuff. You can take notes. And then, of course, fast forward. I know y'all remember this one. So it, it's the Google Glass because it's not for old heads right here. Google Glass, you remember the whole wire, wire, wearable thing? You know, the glasses itself, and it had a big square looking like you was part of the Borg. <laughs> if y'all, for my Star Trek heads that's out there. But it had a lot of privacy concerns. It, and the price tag was outrageous as hell. And it had limited function functionality that I mean, ultimately led it up to dime, which, which is crazy to me because I'm like, why would you invest so much time and product into it was time and, and talent into these things if you don't want to get them to a place to where a regular person would use them? I feel the same way about the Apple Vision Pro. It's like the tech in it is super cool. And I do see the functionality behind it, but it's not for the average consumer. I mean, it's $3,500 and people are complaining about it. I was like, but you saw this. This is not for the average consumer. This is not for you just to be sitting down chilling. This is for people in industries. Like you, I mean, this is for executives. This is for people. I mean, I made a whole video on it. Go check out my video on it. I mean, it, it was, it's for people that work in real estate. It's for construction workers. It's like now for doctors because doctors are doing like examples of like open heart surgery and they can try it out without actually having to go intrusively into the patient and get it done first before they actually have to cut the patient open. So, you know, it's it's the, the BlackBerry, BlackBerry phones. BlackBerry was ahead of its time when it first came. I love BlackBerry and and the BlackBerry the, the, the uh, devices themselves. To me, it was like one of those bricks. I'm like the Motorola's, like the bricks that you could never really like destroy. Even though people did kind of, they did, they did break them. Especially on my job, they they broke them all the time. I don't understand how they broke them, but they they broke them. But I love BlackBerry, and you saw BlackBerry ultimately phase out. BlackBerry did not shift with with technology and industries uh, standards going forward. Then you had uh, Quibi. I don't know if y'all remember Quibi. It was a short form video streaming service, almost like what it was, um, like what you, what you have right now with TikTok. Then you got uh, Facebook Libra, the proposed cryptocurrency. It faced regulatory hurdles and lack of trust from users, leading to its cancellation. So it's some of those things to where you put talent into them. And they ultimately fail because you don't properly plan for or look at to see what the market might potentially want and actually do some good market analysis. Like even, I mean, the Google Glass tried it for a little bit and they gave it to some creators and they had them, uh, you know, play around with it and they get people interested, potentially interested in it and see the functionality behind it. But to me, I don't think it was market ready when it went to the influencers because it was like the, the, the UI was terrible. And even if y'all know anything about UI, User experience and then you just use the interface, which is UX UI. It's like to me, it's gotta be, it's gotta be easy. It can't be complicated, 
And, you know, it's got to be for people, for everyday consumers, like the Apple Vision Pro, their UI and their user, UX, user experience part of it, it's actually pretty good. It's, I mean, it's, it's a minor learning curve. And that's really what you want when you're trying to build out something. You want a small learning curve to go into anything, because if, if it's too complicated, it's, you're going to lose a lot of people, especially the older people. They, I mean, it, the older people are just not going to get down with stuff like that, even though they should, but it's not going to get get down with stuff like that. So, I mean... Then we look at like the uh, poor market fit for it. And then the lack, like I just said, lack of user testing and inadequate planning. We don't, they're not properly planning to make sure people are actually something, this is something they're interested in, which goes back to your market analysis. So you have to, like they have to work towards with anything solving a problem. And it's, and it's like, I don't know if y'all remember uh, robots from Disney's. I think it's Disney that make robots. I think it's Disney make robots. But anyway, it's one of the, the big adventures on there, which I love that cartoon. I'm a big, I mean, y'all know me from my show. I'm a big anime cartoon person. I, I prefer those over uh, real life stuff sometimes. But one of the robots in there was like the inventors. He was like, you got to see a need to fill a need. See a need, fill a need. And I think that's really what it comes down to. Even if it's something that they haven't been identified as of yet, I still think that should be the premise behind anything that we all come up with. Okay, what's needed out there? And how's my product going to be different than the other players that's out there? And if it's not existing, what will make somebody want to come and use something that they haven't seen before? And then you got the poor execution of some stuff like that. Where they, they roll stuff out, it's buggy, has bad design. I mean, we saw that with uh, Pixel stuff when it first came out. And I mean, everybody pretty much when it first came out of smartphones. Like, Apple had a good smartphone at first, but it still was buggy as hell. And now because Apple's trying to compete with other people with their uh, operated, iOS operating system. Now, it, it used to be really reliable where it wasn't as bad. Now, they ship it out just to get ahead with bugs in it. And it makes for a bad experience. So, it's like you go to buy a product and it's not even working as it should because they've i mean even let's let's who else is out there that actually some of the features the cyber truck so the cyber truck had a whole bunch of stuff listed that was ready to go with the big panel panel lights across the top of it um some other key features that they hyped up during is 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 pre-order with the pre-order session and introduction to the market itself and then all of a sudden it's what two three years later it's time for the cyber truck to be released and they still don't have those those things ready to go. So it's like you do all those things and this is not like a CES type thing. You do all those things and then you get people to do pre-orders and actually pre-order that very product that you was featuring when, it, when you demonstrated it and then now it's time for release and it's nowhere to be found. They ship to owners without that hub cap. Remember the aero cap that we see in all those early cyber trucks, especially when they show all that promo material? That's not on this truck, but it exists on their website. The other is the light bar on the top. It's also, who knows when it's coming. There's no info about it. I saw one at Tesla's factory, but no indication of when that's going to come, even though I ordered one and I have a truck that doesn't have it. So it's like, dude, you don't even have the trust now to have people want to actually get into and buy into your company. They lose, because I, I would never own a Tesla. I mean, for my own personal reasons, I would never buy a Tesla anything, which is why my, you saw my thing about my car, which I'm going to make some com content on that. My EV, I went with the Ford Mach-E. Now, some of y'all might not like the Ford Mach-E, but to me, I love the car. I love the way to look. I love how it looks. And it's a sidebar because I love Orion. Orion is the name of my Ford Mach-E. And I love like the technologies inside of it. And in comparison to what the Mach-E is, the uh, Tesla Model Y, the Tesla Model Y is ugly as hell. I see people driving around just because it's a Tesla, but to me, it's just ugly as hell. Because I'm like, if I'm going to get in a vehicle, I'm going to pay a lot of money for a vehicle. I at least want it to be appealing to. This is not one of those relationships type things where it's like, oh, it's on the inside. I don't care about what's on the inside. I do care about what's on the inside, but the outside got to look just as good too because I want something that when I walk up to it, I'm smiling because I'm like, God damn, you look, you look sexy. Yes, sexualizing it, yeah, but it's still, I mean, that's with anything. Like, if you, people that buy luxury cars, you're not buying a luxury car just because of the name itself. you but buying something because you like the way it looks. And then when you get on the inside, you like the way the interior looks, too. Now, you'll sacrifice some certain things like that without having certain features because it looks great. Well, not me, but other people will. But then you have to look at some of the other things, like what caused it to, like, text to fail. And then... So we had like the segways. I don't know if y'all remember segways, like the little hoverboards. It was nice at introduction, 
So the technology itself was imp- it was very impressive. <laughs> Your little self balancing scooters, which you know grown people need to learn how to do that because they can't keep themselves up, but they was falling on their behinds. But it struggled to find a clear target and market, and remain like remained a, a niche product itself. It was like it was just a gimmicky type thing, to where you had people they were setting up costumes and using for costumes, but. It's one of those one-offs. Is is I mean, it was cool when they during introduction, but it's like okay, well, I mean, who's gonna use that? Like, who's gonna? I mean, you see the segue. I mean, they had the mall cop. He was using the segue riding around the mall in. So it's like, who's really like who is that made for? Because I'm like, if even if you're in a crowd of people, it's kind of hard to get maneuver through a crowd of people with that segue. And yeah, you got to counterbalance weights, things that you can use to like maneuver in and out of stuff. But it's still at the end of the day. If it's a crowded mall or if it's a crowded arena, that's not going to do nothing. And then if you got to chase somebody down, that's really not going to do because now you got to hop off of it and or you riding with you trying to chase them on the segue. But that thing is not going but so fast. And then I mean, and then they can maneuver in and out of place, which means you got to be on foot. So all law enforcement was using it, but it's um, it, it just it failed to do anything. Hi, I'm Antonio Hicks, the heart and soul of engineering tomorrow. My journey into content creation and podcast production began with a passion for storytelling and a dedication to sharing knowledge and ideas in innovative ways. At Engineering Tomorrow, I wear many hats, from audio engineer to content strategist. This means when you partner with me, you get personalized, end-to-end service tailored exactly to your needs. My mission? To help your voice be heard in a crowded world transforming your vision into impactful audio experience. Whether you're looking to launch your first podcast or elevate your current content, I'm here to guide you through every step. With Engineering Tomorrow, you gain not just a service provider, but a committed partner who values your success as much as you do. Seeing projects come to life and listening to clients share how thrilled they are with the work we've accomplished together is why I do what I do. Your story deserves to be shared, and I'm here to make sure it's told in the most engaging way possible. Ready to bring your story into the ears of listeners around the world? Let's make it happen together. Reach out to me at engineeringtomorrow.tech or info at ptgtv.online. Engineering Tomorrow, where your story meets the future. So what happens when the product comes up for introduction, it comes for sales, it comes for a pitch, they do market analysis, but then something in the project itself goes wrong, like, the, the use cases behind it is not adding up the way it's supposed to. You have on lunch day, like you have technical glitches. And one, for instance, if y'all remember this, is during the Obama administration, they came out with healthcare.gov. I'm sure y'all remember healthcare.gov. It's part of the Affordable Care Act. It is not Obamacare. And if you say it's Obamacare, you're racist as hell. I don't care if you're not a racist, but you are racist as hell because there is no... I argue people down with this all the time because it pisses me off. And I, it's not... I, I don't like everything that President Obama did. But at the end of the day... There is no bill that passed before Congress and the Senate that's, that's, that's called Obamacare. It's called the Affordable Care Act because you didn't call it Romney Care because it came from an idea that Mitt Romney used when he was in office in the state that he was uh, a senator in. Oh, no, he was, was he a governor? Whatever. He, I, can't, I can't stand Mitt Romney, so I kind of wiped these people out of my head. But anyway, so when, the, when healthcare.gov got launched, a part of the Affordable Care Act, like there was no back end. I told you I work in technology. There was no back end to troubleshoot this to make sure it can handle a massive amount of traffic. And when they launched that thing, like with any launch day of any brand new product, I don't understand why this happens with, especially with advanced companies. The, it, the website crashed. It was almost like they did a, a DDoS attack. I don't know if y'all know what a DDoS. It's a d- distributed denial of service. It's when you flood a server with a ton of false packets. And the server couldn't recognize at first whether or not it's good traffic versus bad traffic, which it, it now has to try to load balance it and push off for something else. Anyway, if, if it takes too much traffic in, it overloads it and it shuts down. That's the purpose of a DDO West attack. And so that was um, similar to what happened with healthcare.gov. It's like they didn't have server capacity for it. They didn't do proper load balancing. And then, so it's, it, it, you know, that crash, it, it was something that they thought about, went to market with it, they didn't, I guess they didn't test, they shouldn't, they didn't test it. And then all of a sudden, once it actually goes live, people see that it's trash. And now you got tech support. You need to hire in more people because you have people developing it. But now you need more people to be brought in to help troubleshoot it, 
figure out what's wrong with it and now try to get all the bugs worked out, introducing new bugs and get everything back up in service. It's working now, it's still trash, but it is working now. And if there is nothing affordable about healthcare at all. And it's the same thing with the Google Glass. It was innovative eyewear that came out. It was aiming towards revolutionizing communication like with the augmented reality, which I still think that's the future is augmented reality and virtual reality. I believe that is that's happening. And I think the Vision Pro is the way of doing that, but something that's a little bit smaller, but it's showing you what can be done if you add in more cameras and more stuff to be brought into it. But the, uh, you still, again, with most things like that, you got to have privacy concerns. So what kind of firewalls are you looking at? And then you got to bring it down to where you want to make it more affordable. And then it, you got to actually make it to where people like like it and they think it's attractive. Because, again, we talked about that with like luxury cars and what I was talking about with the Ford mach -E versus a Model T. So when you don't have those things in place, nobody's going to buy your product. And you're going to have influencers trying to tell people to do it. But nobody buying that. I mean, if, you, if, if they look at it, especially like the Vision Pro, it's, it's trendy because it's Apple. Everybody like Apple stuff. Apple stuff is, is a sign of like luxury because it's expensive as hell. And that's looking, that's, that's about the same way you pay $3,500. But now you got people out there now that saying they, they got, they paid for this thing and it was excited when they first got it. And now it's just sitting on their shelf. And I'm just like, it's just a waste of money because that wasn't for you. Like, you, I mean, I get it. You got money. I mean, you, you got the money. You can spend your money however you want to spend your money. But I still think at the end of the day, that wasn't, that's not for you. And I would have just asked Apple, I get content creations, like you're going to make it and you want to make that content for it. But yeah, no, nah, I, nah, I ain't no excuse. I mean, I you would do you would do better talking about it as opposed to like having it on your head and like showcasing it. Unless, you know, Apple sends you one, then you got a test kit and then you just turn around and use it, talk about it and send it back. But I think realistically, the, those people that have the kind of money should donate that to to services like real estate agents or people like that to show them how to use it and get them to actually buy the product itself and then give theirs. Yeah, I, yes, absolutely, absolutely sell theirs at a wholesale price to those people over there because it's just going to sit there and collect dust. So now you got a, a, a big piece of tech that's expensive as hell just sitting out there collecting dust. And then some of the other th reasons that tech fails, like let's look at what Zuckerberg did, what Facebook did, or Meta, what they call with trying to introduce the metaverse. Now, I think the metaverse is still something good. I want those big sword art online people. If you don't know what sword art online, I told you I'm a big anime person, go watch sword art online. It's a great anime. I don't know about the new stuff that's out, but when it first came out, great anime, great manga. So I encourage y'all to look at it and read the manga itself too. But to me, it's where you can put on a headset and actually feel like you're inside of a world and you'd actually lose, well, I don't want to say lose consciousness because I don't want people to feel like they're dying. But you can get lost in it. And they had another game, like, the, what was it called? Second Life, when I was learning programming, that you could, uh, that, simula that was similar to that, but it wasn't like a VR, but you could live like a world, you could live a life into inside of a, a virtual world and actually open up storefront locations and then sell stuff in there. Same as uh, Ready Player One. So I like stuff like that. I think the metaverse is the future too. I think the metaverse is a way to, we, we can start integrating new jobs and stuff into society and actually do it in a virtual type world to where they can work in an office type setting or work anywhere and be able to get their jobs done. Like I, my job right now, I literally can do it anywhere in the world. And it would be awesome if I can do it like in a virtual type environment to where I got so many things around me and just to do like my test, the test I have to do on the technology that I'm using, cause I'm not, I can't, I can't really talk about what I'm, what I'm working on. But, um, I think it would be cool to do stuff like that. And I mean, we've seen movies now that's been incorporated in, I could just say Ready Player One, it's been other movies that have come out just kind of similar to the same thing. And of course there's anime out there that's, that's mocking the same. Like Solo Leveling, if y'all haven't seen another anime, that's another anime similar to it. I love Solo Leveling. It's, uh, well, no, is it? It's another one out there too. It's not just Solo Leveling. But yeah, it's, but anyway, stuff like that. I think the metaverse is the way. Now, how Meta did it and how they rolled it out, it was terrible. Like it, it was, it was terrible. You had regular avatars that looked like something off of Apple stuff that was like a uh, cartoony, and I'm like, there is no way you're gonna sit in a meeting and you got a, a cartoony avatar. Now, Apple's is not to say Apple's their thing for their uh their their how it replicates your faces any better, but it's better than that. It's way better than that. So it's like to me. 
I think with the new stuff that's coming out, I think it'll work. I, I, I hope, well, Mark Zuckerberg left, what, 15,000 people that worked on that team because it failed. I think if they, they get back to it and like change it back up, it'll work. But you got to make sure it works the right way and tell people and, and convince people how it can work for them. Because I think that's what's really missing right now. We're not really convincing people and telling them how it really can work. Because I think seniors, I think seniors would be great in using something in the metaverse. It, it actually would stimulate their minds and it would give them a chance to actually talk to other seniors, other people that's the same age as them. And it actually help them to be able to communicate and feel like they're getting out and seeing something totally different outside of what they're seeing, like in a retirement community and or, you know, when they're stuck in a kid's house and they really can't get around it much because, you know, because it's just, it's gotten old, old it's old, getting old is shitty as hell. I'm going to just put it out there like that. But anyway, so, and I know I enjoy the idea of getting old. I just don't like the idea of your body breaking down. I don't know why the creator did that. This just, it's, it's, it's terrible. I, you know, let me get old and let me just send me on my way once I get to a certain age. Don't let my body just break down. It's like it's hard for me to maneuver stuff, get Alzheimer's, all kind of other stuff. And this is... Uh, but anyway, so I think those things would help out with seniors. But now you have to make it in... You have to make the user experience in a way that seniors can understand how to use it and you can teach them how to use it and i think that that's really what they should get down to make it in the most dumbest way possible and save the nerdy stuff for us nerds so we can do stuff in there that they can't do and it, it you know and maybe it might spark interest in in them but anyway that's that's what i want to get on today i mean some of the stuff that i want to talk about is just what i mean you know why take fails so it goes from it goes from improper planning to bad market research, to bad market analysis, which is part of market research, bad pricing, and then not actually making sure things are fixed as they should before you roll them out because now you got bugs and stuff that's in there once it goes into production. Yes, so I work in R&D, so it's like you, you got to go from testing, proof of concept, from proof of concept, you know, get everything tested out and ready to go. Try to fix whatever bugs you can. You can't, you can't find everything because you got, still got zero days that's out there. And the way the bugs weren't found during it because it just it was a glitch it just didn't exist to, before going to production now it's in production fix minor bugs you got to fix minor bugs yes in quotation my minor bugs fix minor bugs and not have to worry about major stuff that's causing the whole thing not to function as it should when it was released and I think that's the biggest reason that tech tech fails I mean with the cryptocurrency we use cryptocurrency in the the dark, darkest of places. That's what cryptocurrency first was rolled out at. This is to bypass, you know, financial systems that we don't have to worry about stuff like that. And I was brought to mainstream. So now you brought it out to mainstream and everybody liked the algorithm behind it and how safe and secure it is, which is like your Bitcoins and stuff. And then, and you just, it comes from blockchain and how secure it was. And now we get into a place of it, but crypto did, it, crypto was failing. It, it was failing. It was failing for a little bit. Now they're trying to bring it back. I mean, you had law uh, official or political officials trying to get it banned. And now we got the rise of AI and you got some buggy AI out there, but you got some good AI. Do you have, but I say bow down to your AI overlords. But I, to me, like, yeah, it has a listed out those things why tech fails. I think we got to get back to making sure stuff works right before we release it out to the public. And I understand that you got investors out there and you got board members. They're looking for this product to get out there because they want to see their money come back that they've invested into this company. But I think still at the end of the day, if you release it the right way, then I think people will buy more into it and you'll get more. You get probably newer customers than what you did if you release it out the wrong way. And then you get the bad videos from the content creators and not encouraging people to actually buy your product. So thank you all for tuning in again. For those that are actually hanging around, my reoccurring viewers, thank you all for being loyal to this channel. The small number of you all that you are. I don't care how small you are. I appreciate anybody. Everybody actually tunes in and checks out my content. That follows up my videos. Actually joins in on my live when I go live every Monday and Wednesday on YouTube and on Twitch. So I thank y'all for hanging around here. I thank y'all for subscribing to this channel. And then let's talk about it. Let's talk about it down below. Like what other tech did you see come out that actually failed? And let's get into like, why do you think it failed when it came out? Like I said, I think it's from poor execution and not proper planning things out before they released it to the public. And then pricing strategies. I get certain things that you can't 
you know, can't price too cheap because it costs a lot in production. But you can't beat people over the head either. Well, uh, but you can't just be, you know, charging these overpriced things for something that only costs you about two hundred dollars to make. But now you want to charge three thousand dollars because you want to bring in all this revenue from it. So, and that's kind of like how Apple's business model is because it don't cost as much to make all these smartphones, but they charge. They want to mark the price up like about 30 40 percent. So anyway, thank y'all for tuning in again. I hope y'all are being safe out there. Y'all go out there and live life because it is 2024. And you know, what does that mean? That just means that, you know, time is always short around here. You never know. Tomorrow's not promised. So go out there, enjoy life. Springtime, get inside of that pile and go out to do some hacking and sneezing. And then just, you know, get online, play with some people. But just, yeah, enjoy life, re-innovate yourself. And let's do something different this year. Let's get away from all this fighting and all this bickering between, you know, religion and race and stuff. And let's actually enjoy life and enjoy people. Some of you got some shitty people out there, but let's let's enjoy people. So y'all be safe. It's Antonio Higgs, TV. Peace out. <laughs>